you're in a good place now. You are listening to Perspectives with Ashley Burgess. Welcome back live to Live Your True Life Perspectives, and I'm your host, Ashley Burgess. On today's show, we're going to be exploring spiritual bypassing and how many of us might be using this. Maybe some of your friends or family are using spiritual bypassing as a defense mechanism in their own life. And this is very interesting because I came across spiritual bypassing a while back, and it was a very interesting idea, um, a very interesting concept. And I want to share this with the Live Your True Life uh, listeners because I think that this is very important. And, you know, the spiritual bypassing basically describes the tendency to use spiritual explanations to avoid complex psychological issues. And the term itself was coined in the 80s by a transpersonal psychologist and psychotherapist, John Wellwood, in a book written, and I believe his title of that book was Toward a Psychology of Awakening. And it's interesting because he defines what spiritual bypassing is and how it's a tendency to use spiritual ideas and practices to sidestep or to avoid facing unresolved emotional issues, psychological wounds, and unfinished developmental type tasks. And it's interesting because he wasn't just explaining this as, hey, other people do this and this is what other people do. He actually was able to take a look at himself and realize that he too was actually doing this as well. And he realized that he was doing this as a type of defense mechanism. Rather than working through hard emotions or confronting issues, he would simply dismiss certain things happening with spiritual explanations or that toxic positivity that we've talked about in previous shows. And I think oftentimes this has done this to protect yourself from harm or to promote harmony between other people. But it doesn't really resolve an issue. It doesn't really give us a solution. It just kind of glosses over things and things kind of stay where they are. Now, I've also seen another side of spiritual bypassing as well that I find interesting. And that is when people are judging you um, and they're spiritual bypassing themselves. So, you know, they're judging you in your life, but they're hiding behind this version of this extremely spiritual person and, you know, this extremely high attained spiritual being, guru, what have you. But in reality, they're judging you and trying to avoid feelings of their own issues and trying to act like they're higher and mightier than you are or than your issues. So very interesting. We're going to talk about all this today. So there's a lot going on. And some of the signs that we might see when someone is spiritually bypassing, one of the things that I find very interesting is one of the things is avoiding those feelings of anger, avoiding what anger feels like. And I don't like feeling anger all the time. Don't get me wrong. I don't want to be angry all the time. That's not an emotion that I want to sink in with or hang out with for long periods of time. However, we do get angry. Anger happens. Things happen. And so when we try to avoid that feeling too much, what happens? We suppress it. It comes out in different ways, right? It it shows up in different ways. It's got to show up to the surface at some point. I mean, that's the way life is. And so we want to realize when we're avoiding anger or suppressing that. I've also found in certain folks that when they believe in their own spiritual superiority um, as a way of making themselves superior or feeling better, um, as, you know, as a way of separating themselves and limiting those insecurities. And there's some folks out there that you know, have that tendency of being a, you know, a spiritual guru or in a place where they seem to have all the answers when in reality they just don't. And they're actually using that Um, to safeguard themselves. They're using that to hide behind um, that type of concept um, for themselves so they can believe in that, but also for others to see them in a different light. I also find, too, and I'm not saying that sometimes it's not good to see it this way. Now, you know, I'm not saying that this is all steadfast and true black and white thinking here. So there's always gray areas here in in what we talk about here on this show because we have to live somewhere, you know, between the black and white. There's got to be some some kind of middle ground. Um, One of the concepts is believing that traumatic events must serve as a learning experience. 
or there's a silver lining be- behind every negative experience. And, and I, you know, some people would say, well, you know, that makes you feel better about it or it puts a, you know, puts it into a different light or it spins it more positively. And, and I think any time that you are able to see things in a more positive light, that's good. But I think also, though, being able to process the emotions that we have when things happen is important, too. I think that sometimes when we spin it into a certain light, something that happens to somebody else, and you go, oh, but the bright side is, or, oh, you know, look at the silver lining is, sometimes we're not allowing that person to process the feelings and emotions that they've gone through in the process of going through this actual experience. And so I think that if we allow the person or allow ourselves to express how we feel and to deal with our emotions and to process those emotions. And then after that, we're able to try to look and find that silver lining. I think that that's a good practice. But I think doing the silver lining prior to expressing our feelings just makes us stuff our feelings deeper down inside, which is not good because it's eventually going to what? Those feelings are eventually going to show up somewhere at some point in time. I think another aspect of that is having that really almost unattainable idealization or idealism of what life is like, like this, like this, you know, this pinnacle cornucopia of excellence of what we should be in. And, And I do think that life should be great, but I think that sometimes, you know, when we look at certain types of levels of spiritual bypassing, we may start actually making ourselves feel worse because we're not at a certain, uh, attainability we might say we we, our our life isn't where we think that it should be that it should be much more we should be in a much happier state we should be blissful feeling all the time we should be in bliss and you read some of the stuff from some of these gurus that we should be in bliss and I understand the idea of being in the now you know being in the moment you know not being in the thinking brain you know, I've written a book about this, The 10-Day Challenge to Live Your True Life, and part of that is about, you know, exiting the thinking brain and realizing that our brain is not us, that our thoughts are not us. It's just an organ producing these thoughts, and we need to see the difference. But I also believe that sometimes we can come up with a concept of what our life should be, and it can feel really bad if we're not living that particular life. I also feel that sometimes spiritual bypassing can lead to detachment, not only detachment in our own lives, right, but also our friends, if they're spiritually bypassing, can detach from our own issues, seeing our issues as small or pedestrian or things that are beneath them or things that they can judge um, because they're not going through that. Um, And I find that that leads to a lot of detachment as well. You know, when you look also at um, focusing on only spirituality, and ignoring the present. So I, a long time ago, I went through a period of time where I went through a very spiritual journey. And there were times where I didn't think about, I mean, I worked and stuff like that, but I didn't put, I, I put so much effort into my spiritual journey, which was, I think, at the time, very important. But there was a moment after several years and kind of, you know, and I think it's very important to realize that it needs to be spaced out and you need to focus on other aspects of your life and your spirituality is one component of you, right? It's not your whole life. It's not your whole component. And and it took me to realize that too, where yes, I'm I'm trying to work on the spiritual attainment and I'm trying to work to this level and that, but yet that is not the only reason why I'm here. There's other aspects of my life that I need to focus on. And that was a wake up call for me. Because I realized that there were certain things that were falling by the wayside that I needed to take care of. That if I was always trying to be in that spirituality, in that that space all the time, some of the things are going to fall by the wayside just because of the nature of them. Because they're not part of that particular, or, or we don't see it, right, as part of the spiritual journey. And I think that's more of it. Because I think all the aspects of our life is part of a spiritual journey. But we can start defining that as, oh, well, that's not our meditation. That's paying bills. Or, you know, that's... That's this or that's, you know, it's very different or that's buying groceries or that's doing this. But all this is important in the grand scheme of things to make our lives move forward. I also find, too, only focusing on the positive or being overly optimistic or having that toxic positivity is also a sign to you. And, and, and I'm not saying that we shouldn't be positive. I'm a big believer in positivity. Without positivity, I mean, what's the opposite? You know, we could be very negative. We could see everything in a negative place. We could see everything in a painful position. We can see everything that way. And that, to me, is only going to give you more pain and suffering. But to some degree, we do have to see, I believe, more of 
at least a neutral response, right? At least more neutral than negative. And I, and I like to be as optimic, optimistic as possible. Uh, and I think that it's it's good to be optimistic, and I think it's 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 a healthy way of living to be optimistic. But I think there's also you know levels of you know healthy optimism, and then there's levels of, of uh, what I consider toxic optimism because. I think sometimes you have to really examine things and look at things, and sometimes not everything is perfect. Sometimes not everything is great. Sometimes there's problems that have to be dealt with and have to be dealt with properly. And until they're dealt with properly, we're not going to be able to move on properly in a situation. And so I found that sometimes we got to deal with stuff head on, even though we might not want to do that. Um, I also find sometimes, too... That with that toxic, with toxic positivity, also with spiritual bypassing, sometimes there's a tendency of pretending that things are fine when they're not. Pretending that things are fine when they're not. And that's an issue. And I, I don't want to always, we don't want to just create problems with nothing. And you definitely don't want to do that. Definitely don't want to create problems out of thin air. Definitely don't want to make things bigger than they are when you don't have to, because that's drama, right? That's drama. That's the other side of the coin is creating that drama, right? Where we don't need that drama. There's enough people out there creating drama all day, every day, right? But there's sometimes where we do act as if everything's just fine when it's not. And there's the things that we actually have to take a look at and analyze and have conversations about and figure out what is our best direction. It might not be the easiest of courses. This could be challenging. Or you know what? Maybe it's just going to take a little bit of talking and understanding and coordinating to get this done. But again, in order to do that, we have to actually take a look at it. And if we're sitting in that spiritual bypassing position, we're probably not taking that accurate of a look at it. We're probably trying to gloss over it, act like it's fine and move on because we don't want to really deal with it. But again, what happens when we sweep something under the rug? It's swept under the rug and we're going to trip on it eventually, right? We're going to fall over and trip on it eventually because it's under that rug. It's a big ball of stuff under a rug that we're walking on. It's not going to be very easy to walk over. Uh, I also think that, you know, looking at people's problems, there's a tendency of people, you know, of, of assuming that people can overcome their problems through positive thinking. And I think that positive thinking is a very good thing. I don't think it's the only way we can overcome our problems. I think that positive thinking, but also action is the way to overcome problems. Action. What is the next action? What do I need to do? What is the next thing that I need to do? What can I do to make things better? What are some actionable items that I can take to make my life better or to overcome this situation. And so when I return, I'll be talking more about spiritual bypassing. Uh, I'll continue on with a couple of more signs of spiritual bypassing so you understand that. And also getting into the judgment piece of what that can look like. Because sometimes when you're dealing with people who are spiritually bypassing, there's a tendency of them seeing your problems as your problems and not seeing your problems as also problems that they faced or, or just, you know, understanding the human situation and understanding where you're coming from. And, and sometimes it can come from this high and mighty source. And, and that can be really challenging, especially if you've looked up to this person spiritually or you believe in them or you feel like, you know, they have a good beat on things. It can be hard when somebody does that because you're not expecting, you're expecting a, diff a totally different way of action. So stay tuned. I'll be right back. We have a lot more to talk about today. Live Your True Life Perspectives with me, your host, Ashley Burgess, will be back in. I'll be back this time. You know it in two shakes. Turn it up and jump in the deep end on Perspectives. Now, here's Ashley. Welcome back live to Live Your True Life Perspectives, and I'm your host, Ashley Burgess. On today, I'm talking about spiritual bypassing, understanding what spiritual bypassing is and some of the signs of spiritual bypassing, as well as sometimes when you're dealing with someone who has spiritually bypassed, how they can make judgment on you going through the human condition and other things that we go through as humans in this lifetime. And if you're just tuning in, you know, there's a whole concept of what spiritual bypassing is. 
you know, and there's that tendency to use spiritual explanations to avoid complex psychological issues, as well as to really sidestep avoiding kind of the big issues, avoiding the psychological wounds, the unfinished tasks, and trying to like kind of like, you know, make things easier to digest. But yet sometimes it might not be actually connecting with our emotions, our feelings, and the information that we need to start gathering to not only be more aware of who we are, but to be a better human, a better, a better being, right? And right before the break, I was going through multitudes of signs of spiritual bypassing. You know, hopefully you'll get a chance to listen to that segment because that is really important in understanding and being able to identify what spiritual bypassing is. So let me finish up with those real quick before we move into anything else. Right before the break, I was talking about that, you know, how thinking that people can overcome their problems through positive thinking. And I agree that positive thinking is very important. And positive thinking is important to set up as far as believing in yourself and believing that there's a way out, believing that there's always another way, believing that you can create things of value. That is very important because without that belief, we don't really have anything else. We can tell ourselves things, but if we don't really believe that to be true, we're not going to believe that to be true. However, the action. In order to make changes and overcome problems in our lives, we have to be able to identify the problems and create appropriate action. And with appropriate action and positive thinking, that's where the two come together to create that effect. Without the action, we have the problem. Also, I think, too, thinking that you must rise above your emotions. I agree that we don't want to be wallowing in our emotions. We don't want to wallow in negative emotions. I totally understand that. That is something that I totally agree with. But yet, sometimes we have to accept those emotions. Sometimes we have to deal with emotions. Sometimes we need to be able to walk in it and process those emotions. Because without processing those emotions, we're not being really honest to ourselves. We're not being honest about our feelings. We're not being honest about our emotions. And all these things will come back to roost if we don't watch out because it can create us a lot of problems in our life. And that is something that's so important is to be able to say, okay, yeah, people can overcome them, but in the process of overcoming them, we have to feel it, see where it's coming from, and understand it. Last but not least is using defense mechanisms such as denial and repression. And I think that's a big thing, too, is like repressing our own things and denying things. But also I think judgment, too, also should be added to that as well. Because I've found that a lot of times when people are spiritually bypassing, it's a lot easier for them to judge other people and what they're doing versus seeing their own situation and their own life and how things are happening in their own life and being honest with themselves about the part that they play. I mean, that to me is very important because if you are a spiritual person and you really are working on your spirituality, self-awareness is key, right? Self-awareness is key. Knowing where you're at, knowing your own deficiencies, knowing your own problems, understanding what needs to get changed, understanding what you need to work on, you know, and being aware of that and being conscientious of that. We all have to work on things. It doesn't make us wrong. It doesn't make us bad. It makes us human. That's who we are. We have to go through the process. That's why we're here on this planet, you know, acting out in our in our human form to try to learn these things. And so and when we return, I'm going to be talking more specifically about the type of of spiritual bypassing because I want you to be able to identify it because some of you might have some spiritual bypassers in your life that you don't even realize and you don't understand what it is about it but once I help you to really identify this it's going to help you out a lot because it's going to be like wait a second now I get it now I understand why that person's saying that or why I feel this way or even maybe why I'm even avoiding some of my emotions why am I doing that myself so stay tuned lots of information to come up here stay tuned live your true life perspectives with your host me Ashley Burke Curtis will be back in. I'll be back this time. You know it. I'll be back this time in two shakes. This is Jake Busey, and you're listening to Perspectives with Ashley Burgess. Welcome back live to Live Your True Life Perspectives, and I'm your host, Ashley Burgess. On today's show, I've been talking about spiritual bypassing, being able to identify when somebody might be spiritually bypassing in their own life and it's impacting your life. Or if we're spiritually bypassing in our own life, because sometimes it can be challenging to see. Sometimes we might not be aware 
that it's happening. And so these are some things that are very interesting to go by. And I, and I agree with positive thought. One of the things is if you've been listening to my show long enough, you understand that I am a big believer in positive thought. I'm a big believer in action. I'm a big believer in change, manifestation, that sort of thing. But everything has to kind of come together in the right amount. Everything has to be added together like the proper ingredients for the best recipe. If you if you add too much sugar, it's not going to work on a cookie. You know what I'm saying? If you add too much salt, your soup's going to taste horrible. So we don't want to have all this over here and none of that over there. So we got to be really conscientious about it and really understand and see, okay, yeah, I got a helping of that. Let me pull back on that and really focus on this. So I got this, but maybe I'm being a little too optimistic or maybe I'm being a little too avoidant. And so we're going to look at that real quick. One of the things is the optimistic bypass. And I talked a little bit about that, but um, we've, we've all come across people in life, you know, we all love to laugh, we love to be happy, um, but yet they seem to be almost forcefully optimistic, right? You got to focus on the positive. You got to see the glass full. You're one of those glass half empty people, you know? Um, don't let that frown get you down, you know? You got to really, really focus, and that's great. That's great, but I think that sometimes that can also be an avoidance of emotion, and that can be an avoidance of having anger or fear or dealing with negative emotions as a whole. Because I think that sometimes some folks out there, it's really hard for them to deal with anything that's a negative emotion. Anything that's not a positive, over-the-top emotion is something that can really get to that person. And I think if you've been around that, and, and I've, ex- I've experienced that in my own life, you know, where you have someone that's very close to you that... Uh, when you try to bring up some tough stuff with them, um, they clam up. And then not only do they clam up, they start getting a little angry with you or they try to turn it around or you're not being positive enough or you're being, man, you become negative Nancy over there. I mean, you know, there was a skit on Saturday Night Live that um, Debbie Downer, you're being Debbie Downer over there, you know, and you're like, I'm not being Debbie Downer. I'm just talking about, you know, how I feel right now. I mean, the fact is that, I don't need to be called names of being Debbie Downer, but, you know, it's not like I'm a down person. I'm a pretty upbeat person, but yet we all have those feelings. And so I've been around that before, and it can be challenging because when you're trying to have uh, a deep conversation with somebody that's taken that optimistic bypass, you can't. It's almost impossible to have that concept with them because they, they, they don't, it's just hard for them to go there it's hard for them to go there and and uh, you know and and that's 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 challenging um and i think it's something that you got to think about because there might be somebody in your life right now and then how do you deal with that how do you deal with that you know do you you can't have the conversations do you just stop the conversations do you just not have the conversation what if it's an important conversation i mean what if it's an important conversation that you need to have with them Then how do you do that? Then you feel like you're kind of like shut down, right? And so that becomes like the elephant in the room because you can't have that conversation. So usually that festers and creates more problems. And I think that a lot of times that happens in marriages. I think there's a lot of marriages out there that are, you know, that are in, you know, that are victims of the optimistic bypass. You know, a lot of marriages out there being the victim of the optimistic bypass. You know, well, things will get better. I don't want to hear about it. We're fine. We're good. No, we're great. We got a great marriage. We're fine. We're good. Let it go. I don't want to hear about it. Yeah, earmuffs, earmuffs, you know, but at the same time, wait a second. What do we got? I mean, we don't have, what do we have here? What do we have for it, Johnny? Not much. So you don't have the conversation? You don't have the conversation of the no sex? You don't have the conversation of the non-communication? Because when you try to bring it up, that person calls you Debbie Downer, or you're never happy, or I don't know why we have to go here, or why do you have to make tonight so bad? Why does he have to do that? Why does he have to go off and talk about that right now? I don't understand. You know, we're having a good night, and there you are, you know, talking about that. Anyway. That can affect many of you. And so if that's affecting y'all, it can be hard. It's like it's like trying to figure out how to have that co- communication and how to open up and how to get them to just be quiet just to be able to listen to you. And that can be exhausting. And sometimes the conversations are never had because you're trying so hard. It's almost like you feel like you can't have that conversation. You can't talk about the things that need to be talked about. The next... The next version of the spiritual bypasser that I want to bring up in today's show is what I call the more awakened bypass. 
the more awakened, the one, the person that seeks to be enlightened and superior and somehow more awakened in their spiritual development than anybody else. You know, they claim to have that certain spiritual, like, milestone, it's, you know, things that happen. They talk about all the things that they've done. Um, they're kind of like, they talk about what, the, you know, what they've done. A lot of times this can be people that are in leadership roles to some degree in spiritual ways. And that's an interesting concept in its own. And we, we all have probably some people in our life. And, and I, I, I've, I've been friends with some in the past, and I know people too as well, that it's like the spiritual superiority. And unfortunately, I, I, don't, I think that's probably at the crux of a lot of problems in our society today. And I think some of us have fallen prey into that before because maybe we have been at a level of spiritual attainment that a lot of people haven't. And I understand that, but again, it's like we have to be careful to adapt ego around any of that because you know spirituality and ego are obviously two different things, for God's sakes. Um, and should not be together. And that in and of itself is a red flag. But there's many people that feel like they're better than, more aware of, more aware than, more solid spiritually. And, well, that in and of itself is a problem. And those same people can look down at other people, judge other people, make other people feel bad based on different situations, and, and basically cause trauma, especially if these people are in any sort of leadership role at all, where they can make people feel bad about the situation, about themselves. Um, and, you know, I, I think that's something important to really think about. Um, I think that's really important to uh, understand, and I think that's something to look, look into if you have somebody around you in your life right now that you feel is like looking their nose down at you. Um, and this could be even in religions, you know, this could be in your church where you feel like somebody acts as if they're more, um, you know, spiritually advanced than you and maybe passing judgment on your life and things that you were going through. And, you know, that's just something, you know, if somebody is very spiritually advanced, the last thing that they're going to do is judge you. You know, the more spiritually advanced somebody is, the less judgment they have. That's just part of the repertoire. It's not the other way around. Um, and that's kind of the argument that I have a lot of times is why we have so much judgment. Uh, a lot of these leaders should, should be in a different position, but they're not. So then again, however, uh, that's where we are. And so I think if you can look at that aspect, too, and be able to recognize any of those types of folks in your life, that could be helpful as well. The next spiritual bypassing I'd like to talk about is what I like to talk or what I like to define as the psychic bypass, and I'm not I'm not against psychics. That's not that's not what I'm saying. I'm I'm not I'm not anti horoscope, anti psychics, anti tarot card reading. That is not what I'm I'm not judging anything. But it's that psychic bypass where people would rather go to a psychic for them to tell them how to live their life or what choices to make. And that, to me, is a very interesting dynamic. Not that it's not an interesting thing to ask, but I think, again, we talk about moderation. Again, we talk about ingredients, right, and a recipe. We don't put all of one ingredient in a recipe. Recipes have many ingredients, and so maybe your recipe calls for 3% of sugar. Okay, great. You're not putting in 90% sugar, but sometimes people look at this psychic bypass and they go back to their psychic in every single turn, every single event, and see what their psychic thinks. And again, this is an external validation or external understanding about one's life. And and my concern is one is you know is is, is looking toward that person to give you answers to your life. The second one is the external answers to your life based on this other person's. Um, psychic ability or perception or you know but also the change in reality or actions based on what that person also says because i've had clients who have come to me and they they've had psychics and the psychic says well i want this or, or you should you know you're going to meet this person or you're going to meet that person or you're going to whatever and they start living their life based on that they start living their life based on what their psychic says. And I, and I think it's okay to maybe visit a psychic here and there, but I think overall we have to be very careful 
about what we put into our mind and what we feel is going to happen in our life. And that is something that I think is also very important to understand. So if you have a friend or a family member or yourself, look at it and see, you know, where did I get to? Why did I go that direction? Even if it's yourself, why did I get to that spot in my life? Why am I looking to this person to kind of give me advice when maybe I can go deep into my own self and start asking myself those questions and be able to develop some answers internally that I need to form about my own life. And that could be a very powerful position to be at as well. Another thing that I find interesting too is like the saint concept bypass. So the bypass, the saint bypass, which I think is interesting. And that's, you know, just basically the belief, you know, of the spiritual person and how a spiritual person needs to be compassionate. They need to always be kind. They need to be saintly. Um, It's that extreme black and white thinking you know, that there is no dark sides. A person can have no issues. They can have no dark sides. You know, there, there's no there's no shadow self. There's no dark side. And as we know as human beings, for goodness sakes, there's always sides to us that are not perfection. There's sides to us that might be darker shadow sides that we have and that shadow self that we might have in certain in certain areas. And that's part of kind of the human condition. And we can work on that. But I think sometimes we shun that side or we we feel bad about that side or we feel painful about that side. And so we judge ourselves. We avoid that. Um, We usually just avoid it. We avoid looking at it. We avoid dealing with it in our personal life. We don't want to see it. We don't want to see that shadow self. And then when we see shadow selves of other people, this is where the judgment comes in. If we're avoiding our own shadow self, when we see the shadow self from other people, we judge it. We make comments about it. Maybe we shun that person. Maybe we, we, we decide that we're, we're not going to hang out with that person because of whatever that is. And we judge them and what they're doing when in reality, some of that might be on our side as well. But since we're avoiding it and wanting to really sit within that saint, that saintly bypass, we avoid it. Because why? We, we wouldn't have friends with that shadow side. We, would, we wouldn't be connected to somebody with that shadow side. So we avoid that and we offset that. And I find that's a lot of the judgment piece is that when someone's trying to act as though they're the martyr, they're the saint, they're perfect, they have no, there's no issues, there's no bumps in the road, it is a smooth street, everything's perfect, it's lined with gold, and life is great, and do everything right, and then it's like, a lot of times what happens is they avoid that, and then with people around them, that's when it gets bad, is that when something happens, and they have a friend or a family member, who is doing something that mimics their shadow self or is parts or aspects of their shadow self. Those are the first people that get chastised. Those are the first people that get cut out. Sometimes they just cut them out. They don't even chastise them. They don't even, you know, they they might make comments. They might go and tell other people or they might have comments to say or they might, you know, whatever that is. But a lot of times they just cut them out because they don't want to see it. They don't want to see it because they have it and they're avoiding it in their own life. And so they don't want to see someone else doing it. And that can be really challenging if you have somebody in your life who is on the spiritual bypassing track. You know, you might be very close to them, but if your life, if you begin to do things that they don't, a spirit, they don't agree with, it could be because of their shadow self and also their avoidance of their truth. And when somebody's avoiding their truth, They're going to avoid you. If you bring any light to their situation, they are going to avoid you at all costs. They're going to avoid you at all costs in order to, in order to save themselves, they will avoid you at all costs. So if you've had somebody recently cut you off, if you were going through a challenging experience and you, maybe you confided in a family member or friend and then they turn on you or they cut you out. A lot of times this is what's happening is they don't want to deal with their own stuff. And they're certainly not going to deal with your stuff because they haven't gotten right with their own life. They can't begin to even go through your stuff because that will bring up stuff that they haven't dealt with in their own life. So they would rather cut you out completely than deal with their own issues. So it has nothing to do with you. It has absolutely everything to deal with them. Stay tuned. Much more coming up about spiritual bypassing. I hope that this show is really connected with you. I think it's something that's not talked about enough. 
in our society today, and it's something that needs to be discussed um, and understanding because this is really the crux of it sometimes, and we can really get to the understanding of why people do what they do or why we do what we do and how we got there. So stay tuned. Live your true life perspectives with me, your host, Ashley Burgess, will be back in. I'll be back this time in two shakes. Get in here. You're listening to Perspectives with Ashley Burgess. Welcome back live to Live Your True Life Perspectives, and I'm your host, Ashley Burgess. On today's show, we've been examining spiritual bypassing, um, the aspects of spiritual bypassing, the signs of spiritual bypassing, the types of spiritual bypassers, and how to really understand that. And I think it's really full circle here because it could be somebody that we deal with in our day-to-day life. It could be a family member or a good friend. It could also be partly us, you know, that we've used this to, you know, avoid certain deep feelings that we've used spiritual bypassing to offset some of our negative feelings in life or some of our sadness or some of our anger you know sometimes we can use this to bypass the dark side you know the shadow work that we need to do and then sometimes maybe you have some people in your life that have bypassed it and they're judging you because you're dealing with your shadow work and they don't want to see it because they don't want to deal with their own truth and this is a very deep concept because you know these are questions we have to ask it's things that most of us don't ask you know and sometimes i know that our my listeners here on labor true life perspectives you're asking yourself these questions all the time but many people just aren't and so it's a deep dive into what we're already probably doing, but things that we can do even more so. Maybe even some thoughts that we haven't really thought about. I think one of the biggest things is just being able to be you, being able to be more open-minded and allowing yourself to be more in a learning process. Like One of the things that I realize is when we're more like a child and we see life more like a child, we're able to express ourselves more in a healthier way. We're also able to not take ourselves so darn seriously. I do think that many of us take ourselves so seriously. We do. And then if anything's wrong, we're like, we feel horrible about it. We feel bad about it. We get down and depressed in our life. We don't want to be wrong. We don't all this stuff. And so it all comes to a head and we get really upset about it. When in reality, it's really not that big of a deal. And so we have to be willing to, you know, not know the answer. We have to be willing to be off target. We have to be willing to, you know, say, hey, you know what? I don't know everything and I'm learning and I'm trying my best. But, you know, sometimes there's going to be things I know and sometimes there's going to be things I don't know. And I think when we're able to get to that level in our life, we've come up to an attainment level that we're able to be at that's really so special. And, and, And I think that's part of it. I think second part is really dealing with that shadow side of ourselves that we try to repress. I mean, I think that we all have things that we all have the light and the dark. That's just part of it, you know. But, I mean, we have to ask ourselves about things and in our life and, and activities and choices that we're making and look at all those sides. Um, you know, look at the sides of the coin on each thing that we're doing. Being more aware, spirit, you know, being more aware of ourself and having more of that guidance and awareness in our day-to-day life. Um, but also, you know, being more accepting sometimes of that other side, not trying to shun that, but trying to learn and grow and figure out how to uh, deal with it and how to be better. And then also not judging our friends. Um, you know, being able to have those deep conversations and understanding our friends better and getting to know what they're going through being that sounding board that they need instead of excluding them or running away from them or making them feel bad, you know, saying, okay, okay, I'm, I'm here. Let's, you know, let's talk. Let me, let me understand you better. Let me, let me understand what you're going through. Let me understand your pain. Um, and you know, and, and, you know, I think positivity is very important again, but I think positivity connected with real action, you know, the right action is necessary. And I think that that's important. If we can get both of those together, we have something. But just just positive thought alone is helpful, but it's not the end-all, be-all to our solutions for our life. We have to have that action. And we also need to have that communication with people that we look up to or people that we connect with um, and be able to have an open dialogue of communication um, that's not judged, that's not uh, looked down upon. Instead, that's actually respected and cultivated and grown and I think this is a very important aspect of our life and 
something that we can really learn from and, and grow from and, and really take in. So I'm hoping that this show has helped you in the concept and being able to identify maybe a spiritual bypasser in your life, you know, or being able to identify, do I have any, any, any sort of symptoms or signs of spiritual bypassing, but also how it impacts us all and the things that we can do to offset that. In the meantime, if you haven't already, check out my YouTube channel. Go to YouTube and just put in Ashley Burgess, Ashley B-E-R-G-E-S, or put in Life Coach Ashley Burgess, and you'll find my channel over a thousand videos. Uh, we upload videos every, almost every day, uh, multiple times a week. And so definitely check into that. We talk about lots of different aspects in life, everything from marriage to family to lots of, to anything from narcissism to spiritual bypassing, and the list goes on. So definitely check that out when you get a chance on YouTube. Also, you can find me on all social medias, including TikTok and Facebook and uh, Instagram. So you can follow me there at Ashley Burgess. And in the meantime, if you have a show concept, you can always reach out on AshleyBurgess.com. Click on that contact page and send me a message, and I'll get back to you ASAP. Please share this with your family and friends and live your true life perspectives with me. Your host, Ashley Burgess, will be back in. I'll be back this time. You know it. I'll be back this time in three shakes. Three shakes.